Think. Act. And prosper. You are now tuned into the Money Level Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Money Level Show. It is Daryl Dominic, and today we're going to think, act, and prosper. You all know what it is. Today, I want to talk about something that is very important, and this is called the biggest wealth transfer in our lifetime. So wealth isn't destroyed. Wealth is merely transferred from one person to another. Let me say that again. Wealth is merely transferred from one person to another. And so when I say that, you have to look at what's going on around us. Uh, A lot of things are going on around us, and we're going to get into that today. And so um, right now we're in the midst of a pandemic. A lot of us, or well, all of us have never seen a pandemic uh, to this extreme. Uh, So, and it's a lot of things going on that uh, we have never seen in our lifetimes. I even asked people that are older than me, you know, have they seen anything like this? And they have not seen anything like this in their lifetime. So whenever there's a crisis, there's opportunity. Whenever there is a crisis, there is opportunity. Uh, So a lot of times people will let a crisis hinder them or paralyze them from taking advantage of an opportunity. Uh, And I say that because many people I know uh, have moved states and things like that. And when they told me that they were considering moving states, I told them, well, honestly, this is the best time to do it, especially if you lost your job uh, and you, you're trying to figure things out and you've been wanting to move states. This is probably the best time to move states, because a lot of times we get caught up in our nine to fives and we we let it control our lives. We let it control our future, our destiny. And we think that it's going to be a good opportunity in the future. And we know the trajectory of working a nine to five, what that can lead to. And we don't take advantage of our dreams and goals and, and the things we want to do in life. And so I've, I've told many people that if you're considering moving right now, this is the greatest opportunity to do so. If you're able to do so, depending on your circumstances. Uh, for me, you know, I've, I've wanted to move states for a little while. But however, my my son is still in Washington State. And so. I haven't done that. I'm like, okay, my son is still in in grade school. He's in fifth grade. And I'm just like, I'm not going to move states right now while he's in fifth grade. So, you know, I'm sticking with it here. However, I was able to take advantage of a lot of things. Uh, You know, the pandemic first hit, you know, I I didn't have to commute to work. My commute to work is about an hour and a half each day. So I saved about three hours per day plus my lunch hour. So that was a total of about four and a half hours per day. And I was able to pick up some side hustles to be able to uh, make some things work. And, and that was important for me. It was like, OK, I can make a little extra money during this time. I'm not driving or I'm not spending eating my lunch for an hour at work. So that was something that I turned into an opportunity. I turned a crisis into an opportunity. Uh, same thing with my real estate license. I was able to start my real estate license. I was able to start the courses for that and was able to get that done. I passed my real estate exam here recently uh, and I'm, I'm working with a brokerage right now. I'm getting started in that. So I turn that crisis into an opportunity. And that's important to think about because a lot of times we think that we have to stay on this same trajectory of life. We have to stay on this same path of life. And it's not true. It's not true. This is the greatest opportunity to be able to make the biggest changes in your life that you have been wanting to make. And so now let's get more into the opportunities that we have ahead of us. So right now we see that a lot of businesses have went out of business because of the pandemic, because of the lockdowns. Businesses weren't able to you know, take care of their mortgages or their rents that they have to pay to commercial uh, owners of those properties that they rent from. Um, and so that, that's, a, that's a thing that people don't realize. It's like, OK, like we shut down the economy, the private sector, you know, the life of our economy, our small businesses are hurting. And I'm not getting into the whole politics of whether we should shut down or not shut down. What I'm saying is that many businesses had to go out of business. And so when you're looking at that, you have to look at, okay, well, you know, there's less competition right now to start a business because many people are struggling to recover and things like that. So if you're wanting to start a business right now, it's a good time to do so. However, you have to think about the model that you're going to choose. If you're going to use a brick and mortar building, 
um, and you start a brick and mortar build business, which is means that you have a physical location that people go to. You have to look at the market. You have to look at, OK, how is am I getting the rents for cheaper since the commercial real estate industry is hitting is hurting right now? Um, you know, you have to think about that. The commercial real estate industry is hurting. So am I going to get a cheaper rent? So those, those are some things that you got to think about when you're starting a business. Right now, the wave of the future is online businesses. People are jumping into a lot of e-commerce. I mean, all this time that we're spending at home, if you're spending that time just watching Netflix and just chilling and eating ice cream on the couch, stuff that I like to do, then, you know, you could be wasting time and you could be starting this, these businesses and things that you want to get going. Uh, a lot of people are getting into the e-commerce. A friend of mine, a good friend of mine, she's she started her business and she's pr- thriving pretty, pretty well right now, you know, and she's doing pretty good with it and everything. And it's just like, hey. When there's crisis, there's opportunity. There is opportunity. So we have to open our minds and think about that. Right now, a lot of people are unemployed and they're sitting on their couch trying to figure out what's next. You know, you have unemployment benefits uh, going to end, uh, things like that. So people have to get creative because we've put our security in our jobs. We put our security in our jobs. We, we went to college, you know, we we got a degree. And then, and then now a lot of people that have gotten a degree can't even pay their student loans back or whatnot because they're unemployed, you know? So we, we put our security and we put our lives in our education. Um, however, you know, now we have to rethink this and we have to re-educate ourselves on, on how money works and financial education and how we can make this crisis work for us because this is the biggest wealth transfer of all time. And so another reason why I say that is because of the real estate market. The real estate market is at all time highs. I mean, you're having uh, people that are buying properties, people that are getting like 20, 30 offers on properties, people that are bidding up the numbers, you know, because of the low interest rates and all those things. But honestly, there's a lot of foreclosures that are coming on the market, a lot of foreclosures that are coming on the market. So properties are going to be way cheaper than they were before. So you got to think about this. The CARES Act entered a uh, moratorium where uh, people can be foreclosed or they can be evicted. So now think about the consequences of that. Okay, so you have a landlord who's written out to a tenant and that tenant can't pay their rent. The landlord cannot evict that tenant to get a paying tenant in there. You have to think about that. Okay, so the landlord still owes the bank a monthly payment. And now if the bank, you know, is, is being gracious towards the landlord, being merciful towards the landlord, then that money is still going to be owed at the end of the day. And so you have to think about that. OK, so owners of properties are going to sell their properties and probably get out of real estate because they're seeing that, wow, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't get, you know, rent. I couldn't pay the, the mortgage on the property uh, because my tenant stopped paying rent. Uh, so should I just get out of this now? Should I just sell this? You know, and, and some people may short sell it or whatnot, and and you can get a good deal on it. So there's going to be some really good deals coming on the market, and if people are patient and if people really stop to see uh, what is actually going on, same thing with foreclosures. People aren't able to foreclose on property, so banks can't foreclose you. How many of those foreclosures are waiting up or backed up? You know, that's kind of what I think about with these moratoriums and these mortgages that that are going to be foreclosed on, but they're unable to be foreclosed on right now because of the laws that have been implemented. So that's important stuff to think about. It's like, okay, when these foreclosures come on the market, the banks are going to want to try to get whatever they can for it. And I heard a number uh, recently about three million properties that are potentially going to be foreclosed on. So that's a lot of properties that are coming on. So people have to think and wake up and say, this is the best time for me to build wealth for myself and and actually change the trajectory of my future and to build wealth for my family. So those are some things to think about when we're coming into this next year uh, to be prepared to save money, to get out of debt, uh, pay off your debts and things like that. I mean, I, I don't encourage, you know, if, if you're $90,000, $100,000 in debt, I'm not expecting you to pay that off. However, you may still be able to take advantage of some of these opportunities that are coming on the market if you're able to save money and, and kind of store some money away. 
So that is the biggest thing. And I believe that the stock market is overvalued. I believe that the stock market is in a bubble. I am taking advantage of that right now. So don't get me wrong. I am in the stock market. However, I do think that a lot of these companies are overvalued. And I don't believe that we really recovered from that. I mean, the stock market is totally disconnected from the real economy. The real economy, we're having thousands, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people continuously filing for unemployment. We have businesses shutting down. We have uh, lockdowns going on around the country and the stock market is still doing good. You know, and I, I personally believe a lot of gamblers have gotten into the stock market since casinos aren't aren't uh, open uh, and things like that. So when you think about that, you know, it is driving the prices of a lot of these companies up. I mean, these P.E. ratios are just out insane. You know, they're insane. And, and a lot of these companies are very overvalued right now. However, you can still profit from that. I'm not saying that you can't profit from that, but I'm just saying to beware that I believe that there's going to be another crash coming soon. Uh, we have never bounced back from a crash that quick. Uh, back in March, I believe, uh, you know, the, the market bottom and then it just bounced back really fast. You know, once we started talking about fiscal spending and, and running deficits uh, by doing the stimulus packages and things like that, the market just bounced back really fast. And now you have the Dow Jones and the S&P 500, the NASDAQ hitting all time highs. You know, this is wild. And so when you to put it in context, back in the 2008 crash, it took years for those stocks to really bounce back to their previous highs. It took years. And we we did that within a year this year. So I don't believe that the market is is valued correctly. I, I believe that a lot of these stocks are going to go down. And so that is why I am uh, being very cautious with my investing in the stock market right now. Um, I, I hope I hope that it stays up. I mean, you, you want to hope for the best, you know, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes like, you know, I, I talk about the worst thing that can happen, but I want to hope for the best. I mean, a lot of people have their retirement plans in the stock market and it is based off how the stock market performs. I remember uh, one of my one of my clients uh, had lost about twenty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars or something when the market bottomed in March. And, and that's that's rough, you know, especially for people that were getting ready to retire earlier this year and seeing the market at that low, you know, and, and having to continue working because the market was that low. Uh, you know, that that's something that you don't want to see. You want to see people be able to enjoy the fruits of their labor. However, we have to look at, like I said before, taking control of our money, taking control of our investments and things like that. Because if we do our own research, we can actually control them and, and minimize our risk even more. However, if we let someone else do the research for us or let someone else do the work for us, uh, such as, you know, financial advisors, such as hedge fund managers and things like that. I mean, there's more risk involved. I mean, and yeah, some of these guys are educated and some of these guys know what they're talking about. But when the market drops, like nobody expects it. And so that is why me, myself, I position myself where I'm able to control my own wealth, able to control my own money and and things of that nature. I mean, to be honest, once I leave my job, I'm going to withdraw my pension fund and I'm probably going to buy an investment property. You know, I tell my wife about that all the time. She's like, she's like, yeah, that kind of scares me when you say that and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, like I, I can't depend on, you know, the government to pay me a pension. The government is running big deficits. The government is 27 trillion in debt, uh, all those different things. So I can't depend on the government to pay me a pension in the future. And so and, and there are statistics on how many people are actually losing their their pensions and, and things of that nature and how the Federal Reserve is buying this bad debt, these junk bonds, and they're actually selling them to the pension funds. And so um, a lot of the pensions are tied to bad debt. So. Those are some things that we have to think about. You know, those are things that we have to study, we have to research, and we have to be ready for the next biggest wealth transfer in our lifetime. And so uh, I hope that you all enjoyed this episode. I hope that uh, you all are able to uh, think about this and prosper, you know, think, act, and prosper. And so I appreciate you all checking this out. And be sure to email me, follow me on Instagram at Money Level Show, follow me on Twitter at Money Level Show like my Facebook page at The Money Level Show. I'm also on YouTube where I do many videos. I'm doing reaction videos and also whiteboard videos where I'm teaching uh, people and breaking down some of these money concepts. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I want to thank you all for your support. So peace.